Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ambassador Tai, welcome. Um, you know, I supported your nomination because I knew you had the knowledge and the competence and the, the ability to do the job, but also because you stated in your nomination hearing, and I quote, uh, well, you stated your intention in the nomination hearing to pursue trade policies that support American innovation and enhance our competitive edge, unquote. A year later, I'm still kind of waiting to see that. And one of the reasons I say that is because I just don't see a focus on expanding market access. Um, one of the major areas of responsibility for the USTR, according to your own website, is and I quote, expansion of market access for American goods and services. And of course, that's a two-way street. Um, the phrase expanding market access, not in your testimony today, it's not a part of the IPEF. And aside from dialing back some of uh, the previous administration's most counterproductive trade wars, to my knowledge, you really haven't been pursuing tariff reductions. Every single presidential administration since Reagan has initiated negotiations on a new FTA. They've done this to increase market access and to help U.S. industries and workers grow and thrive. The, US, uh, the U.K., Kenya, Taiwan, Indo-Pacific countries are just a few of the countries that have reached out to us. They want to strengthen their trading relationship, and that includes having more market access. And yet, thus far, we're not taking them up on it. Now, I get that... President Biden ultimately makes this decision. It's not yours. But you are the U.S. trade rep. You're the president's primary trade advisor. Let me ask you this. Do you think it's in America's best interest to pursue free trade agreements with other countries? So, Senator Toomey, if you'll allow me to back up just a little bit. Um, just a little bit, but we've got to do it quickly because I'm going to run out of time. Okay. Um, um, if by market access you mean um, uh, economically meaningful outcomes, and if by market access you mean um, uh, the removal of tariffs, uh, we have accomplished quite a bit of that in the first year. And I mentioned this uh, to Senator Cantwell, but uh, we began in a very, very tariff-rich environment, uh, and we have removed $20 billion worth of, or avoided $20 billion worth of tariffs in our first year. To your point about uh, free trade agreements, um, <clears throat> Let me say this, uh, I encounter this quite a bit, uh, including from uh, my members of Congress on these two committees, which is that trade policy, uh, market access, trade enforcement, um, takes uh, lots of different forms. Um, and I know that trade agreements um, are maybe the most fun form um, and our traditional trade agreements, um, let me put it this way. Uh, we are interested in pursuing trade agreements with our partners, but we are also interested in ensuring, just like our toolbox on enforcement, we are uh, committed to ensuring that our trade agreements practice uh, evolves uh, with oh, time. Okay, it, here's the thing. My understanding is the U.S. currently has 14 uh, FTAs with 20 countries. Um, you recently seem to be suggesting that you think FTAs are a 20th century tool. But the fact is, China has eight currently being negotiated. The EU has um, 14 in the process of being negotiated. You may think this is a 20th century tool. It looks like the rest of the world thinks this is a 21st century tool. And what this means is that China and the European Union are expanding market access for their pro producers and competition for their consumers, and they're getting mar market share that we're going to miss out on. I think the data is very, very clear. There's all kinds of studies that show that trade agreements lead to more jobs, higher pay, increased economic growth, more options, and lower costs for consumers. It's all, all kinds of great net outcomes. Foreign trade supports over 40 million U.S. jobs. I mean, you, I think you know this data, but without putting market access on the table and lowering tariffs and eliminating barriers, we're just not going to make the progress we could be making, that other countries want to make, that we should want to make. In my understanding, in the 40 years since the U.S. began negotiating our first free trade agreement with Israel, every single U.S. trade rep has worked on or completed negotiations of an FTA. My concern is that you might be on track to be the first trade rep 
n not to continue that streak, and that would come at a, at a big cost to our country. I, I just hope that you will be an advocate uh, for this really important tool to expand trade.